Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, decided to do a quick study on hath come versus is come. Before we get started, I wanted to go into why I did it. Um, Brother JT at Sinners to Repentance, he did a video about why he can't support Chick Tracks anymore, and I'll link his video down in the description box. I'm also going to link uh, Graven Images, a study I did way back when, in the description box. And the whole point of it is the Chick Tracks are getting out of control, and their, their drawings of the Trinity, the pagan Trinity, and things that are false, and then promoting different, you know, easy believism or quick prayerism, I think is what it was. He did a great job using scripture to point out what they, he was doing was wrong. And David Daniels, I did talk to him way back when, and he likes, it's like, it's like it's become a business. Chick publication has become a business, a people-pleasing business. And it's about doing things the world's way and the traditions of men and not standing for the Word of God. And one of the biggest things for the Graven Images part was is the Old Testament, like I said, watch Brother JT's channel, he uses scripture and everything about you can, you're, not, you're commanded not to make any and you're commanded not to worship them. Two separate commands on the same subject. If they try to combine them and say you can worship them as long as you don't make graven images. And you can make them as long as you don't worship them. That's how sad and desperate they're getting. But there was three things that was a concern of mine with David Daniels. He called um, James White, a brother in Christ, on a uh, radio, um, one of his videos where he's doing a radio interview for his book about um, Masons. And they asked him point blank, Do you, are you trying to say that uh, Billy Graham's lost? And David Daniels says to him, goes, oh, oh no, 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 I, I'm not saying Billy Graham is lost. He might not have known. He's a high-level Mason. You can't become a high-level Mason without doing a lot of sinful, wicked, ceremonial junk. Okay, Satanism. He said there's many paths to heaven. He's a friend of the Pope. He's a friend of all these high-level Satanist organizations. He's a friend of the world. Why would David Daniels not have the backbone, the courage, to stand for the Word of God and judge Billy Graham by this book and say, he's burning in hell right now. He's lost. He's burning in hell right now. A James White, who attacks the King James Bible, the Word of God, uh, no, he's a brother in Christ. So those are two red flags to me. Um, and the third, first one is, like I said, Brother JT of Sinners Repentance. Watch his video about how the chick tracks are going and how they're getting out of control and deceiving the people. You know, and my thing is, is you don't need 300 chick tracks. You don't need 300 ways to tell the gospel. It's become a business. Okay? So, those three things I came across, but then someone brought up a fourth thing. I almost bought it too. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, but Chick Publication was promoting the Spanish Bible. And I was thinking, all oh, it'd be cool, uh, you know, David Daniels stands for the Word of God. We're going to find out now that, yeah. Stands for the Word of God, and I'm like, well, um, I'll get it and put it in my collection. You know, it's King James Bible in Spanish, you know. And then someone made a comment under uh, JT's video that the new Spanish Bible that he's promoting, in, um, in fact, we're going to go there. Go ahead and turn to 1 John chapter 4. Uh, if you want to turn to 1 John... Chapter 4. Okay. Um, he says that he made the comment that in 1 John chapter 4, the Spanish Bible translates to has come in the flesh. Now, I don't speak Spanish. I didn't do the translation. So I went ahead and talked to David Daniels on Facebook and asked him, I said, is this true? I almost bought the book. Is this true that it says has come in the flesh in 1 John 4? And he said, yes, it does. It translates to has come in the flesh. And he tried justifying it. There's nothing wrong. Has come in the flesh means past to present. It's good. It's good. Um, but it doesn't mean future. It's not, a t it's not a saying you can say about somebody who's uh, eternal. Who was and is and is to come. Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus claimed to be I am that I am. It's not that I was that I was. Or I will be what I will be. Or I am now what I am now. It's I am because it's something you can say 
And any time period, I am. I am. In the past, I am. Present, I am. Future, I am. Is come in the flesh, you can say in the past, present, and future. Has come, we're going to do this study, you can, it says it, it, it's in the past, and it can be said, and I'll be corrected, it can be all the way up to the present. But it's not talking about the future. It can never be talking about the future. Okay? And we're going to look at this real quick. Uh, John, 1 John 4, chapter 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already, it, it, if I can talk, already is it in the world. I got finished doing a long study, I'm just trying to throw this one out real quick. Okay? Is come in the flesh. When did John write this? I almost want to say anywhere between, you know, 20 to 40 A.D. after the death of Jesus Christ. Um, if he had typed in, if he would not typed in, if he would have put in has come in the flesh, it's come from the past up to the present time where he was. Not today, just then. Okay? God didn't want has come in the flesh. He wanted is come because that's something you can say about past, you can say it in the present, and you can say about it in the future. Jesus is an eternal being. He is God manifest in the flesh. He is God fully and completely. So after I addressed him, it's like he said, well, hath come, has come, and he tries to use like English of today and stuff like that, and he did correct me. I'm standing corrected. I said, has comes not in the Bible. And he said, uh, it's not has come in the Bible, it's hath, H-A-T-H, -H, hath come. So, birds are going a little crazy, hopefully they're not dominating my voice, my the uh, um, volume. But uh, it just stopped raining, the sun's come out, and it's great. So I did stand corrected, and he said that hath come can mean the past up to the present. And so far when we do the study, we're going to see that that's, that's true. It can be the past all the way up to the present. But it can't mean the future. It's still not something you'd say about an eternal being, God. It's not something you can say about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, but you can't say is for present time. Has come is past up till the present, but you can't use it for just present. You can't use it for the future. Mm -hmm. So, that's what got me into this study, and I started looking at it. Um, is come in the flesh. Okay. And like I said, I stand corrected. I'm not afraid. We used to say has come is only used in the past. It's only about the past. Has come is in the past. Well, hath come can mean the past up to the present. Okay. So, is come is used 77 times in the Old Testament, and it's always talking about present. But you got to understand something real quick when I get done. Uh, 40 times in the New Testament for a total of 124 times total. Is come is present, which means you can say is come when you're in the past. You can say is come in the present. And a week from now I can say is come, and I'm correct. In the future I can say is come. Is come can be used at any point in time. Okay? Is come. Okay? Has come cannot. It can only use, be used for the past up to the present. And like I said, when did John write that passage? On the island of Patmos. Okay. So, has come only means up to that point that John wrote that, if they're trying to change it. So, I'm not getting that Spanish Bible that says, has come. Okay. And like I said, I talked to David Daniels. His attitude is, is there's nothing wrong with it. And he says, well, you, when I try to tell him, hey, you need... I hope you get convicted. It's pat is come is past, present, and future. It's something you say about Jesus Christ, who is eternal. He's God. You don't say has come. And I even asked him, I said, the King James Bible, why did the God choose is come in the flesh if has come wasn't a big deal? Why did God choose is come? 
Okay. Well, the King James, well, I mean, it's just, it's just like, I'm t sometimes it's, I don't, I don't get David Daniels. It's like I'm talking to somebody that's just not all there. Because he'll turn around and say, well, the King James Bible's correct. It's supposed to be, is come in the flesh. Then why are you promoting has come? Either the Bible's correct or it's wrong. Which is it? Okay. It can't be both. We have a Spanish Bible that says has come in the flesh when you translate it to English. And then we have the English version, the King James Bible, and it says is come in the flesh. But they're both right. They're both good. It can't be both right as we're going to find out. So I decided we'll do a little a word study, hath come. So if you want to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6 through 9. I wanted to do this study because it's not just like our words. Because like I said, I wanted to see if I was wrong for saying has come. Now has, the word has is not in the Bible, but as far as it's hath. Okay, H-A-T-H. -H. So hath come is in the Old Testament. So 1 Samuel 6, 6 through 9. And that sun's coming out. You get the, caw, uh, the crows going crazy. 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6 through 9. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts? This is after the um, Philistines took the ark. Okay, It started... Uh, Everywhere they took the ark, their god fell down, then it fell down and broke, and pestilence, all this bad stuff is happening to them because they have the ark. Okay. Wherefore, for the, see, wherefore then do ye harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaohs hardened their hearts? When ye had wrought wonderful among them, did they not let the people go, and they departed? Now therefore make a new cart, and take two milch kine, on which there hath come no yoke. And tie the nine to the cart, and bring their calves home from them. And take, and take the ark of the Lord, and lay it upon the cart, and put the jewels of gold, which ye, ye return him for a trespass offering, and a coffer by the side thereof. And send it away, that it may go. And see, if it goeth up by the way of his own coast to Bethshemeth, Shemeth, I can't pronounce that, then he hath done us this great evil. Talking about God. But if not, then we shall know that it is not his hand that smote us. It was a chance that happened to us. Okay. And you find out later that goes that way. It was God that did him. The God. You know, one God. But right there in verse 7. Now therefore make a new cart and take two milch kind unto which there hath come no yoke. Hath come. Past to the present. No yoke has ever hath come on it. Okay. That's where I'm standing corrected. You can say hath come for past up to the present. You can't say it for just the present though. You can't say hath come for right now and only right now. Hath come still implies the past up to the present. Right. So that's the first time hath come is in the Bible. Let's turn to 2 Chronicles 8. 2 Chronicles 8. Almost there. 2 Chronicles 8. Going on 8, 9. Chap uh, chapter 8, verse 9. We're going to read to 12. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no servant for his work, but they were men of war, and chief of his captains, and captains of his chariots and horsemen. And these were the chief of the king Solomon's office, even two hundred and fifty that bear rule over the people. And Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David unto the house that he had built for her. For he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel. An estranged wife. Why? Why won't he let her do that? Okay. Because the because the place places are holy, whereunto the ark of the Lord hath come. Places are holy. Mm -hmm. How far are we going? Twelve. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built before the porch. Okay. Now this says hath come. Now part of me wants to say this is only the past. Because 
he built a house for the Lord. And I can't remember if this was before he built the house. Or after, I should have looked into that. Well, someone in the comments can make it. If it's before he built the house of the Lord, then it's past to present. Any place that the ark has been, he didn't want his estranged wife living there. It's a holy place. Uh -huh. So, hath come is past to present. But if it's after he built the house of the Lord, uh, she's not. nobody's living in the house of the Lord. It's a temple. Okay, um, Then it's just talking about the past, period. Okay. Past, although I guess the past, it's still a past up before it went into the temple. But still, it could be argued for the past to the present. Hath come. But you notice here, it cannot mention the future. It has nothing to do with the future. It's not something that's past, present, and future. Okay. So, Nehemiah. Turn to Nehemiah next time it's mentioned. Nehemiah 9.30. Turn the pages. <laughs> it's biting me. Nine. Okay. Nehemiah 9, verse 30. Still got to get one more page out of me. Thirty to thirty-two. Yet many years didst thou forbear them and testify against them by thy spirit and thy prophets, yet would they not give ear, therefore gavest thou them into the hand of the people of the lands. Nevertheless, talking about punishment for the Jewish people to turn against God, worship false gods. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them, for thou art a gracious and merciful God. Verse 32, Now therefore our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keepest covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee that hath come upon us on our kings, on our princes, and on our priests, and on our prophets, and on our fathers, and on all thy people since the time of the king of Assyria unto this day. So this passage shows that hath come is past all the way to the present. Okay? Now, I can't, I, like I said, I'm correcting myself, brother and sister in Christ. Hath come doesn't mean just the past. It's past up to the present. But it's not, it can never be referred to the present only, and it can never be referred to the future. Mm -hmm. So as you see there, hath come, pa past all the way to the present. So the next time is Jeremiah. Like so you don't just grab one of them and say, okay, it's, that's what got to be what it means. We need to look at all of them. And there's two more places. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25, verse 1 through 7. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken, have, it's past tense, unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hath not hearkened. And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn ye again now every one from his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them, and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger. Provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, 
that you might provoke me to anger with your works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord. Okay. Right over here in verse 3, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you. This is talking about the past. Hath come. How we know? Because now he's saying something new. He's talking about in the past, uh, and go not after other gods, says verse 5. And they say, turn you again now every one from his evil way. They say, all the prophets. Okay? Jeremiah comes. So even if you can try to say it's past to present, Jeremiah speaking to him, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. That's still past to me. He's not talking about the present, he's talking about the past. Hath come to me. Okay. And he's been warning, you've been warned, you've been warned, stop going after false gods, stop going after false gods. But bottom line, even in the context here, you cannot use it for present only, and you can't use it for future. It's only past, or it's only past up to the present. A certain section of time, and that's it. A block of time, and that's it. Not eternity. Okay. Last time it's mentioned, Ezekiel 18. Let's go over to Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18, 1 through 9. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But if any man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a menstruous, I can't, menstruous woman, and hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with with a garment, he hath he hath he that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase that has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgments to deal truth he is just he shall surely live saith the Lord God now notice there's a lot of hats in there it's talking about present okay hath walked in my statues past but it's talking about right now they're walking in his statues mm -hmm. but what we're looking for is verse 6 where it says neither hath come near a menstruous woman neither hath come there we see the words hath come together past tense. And like I said, they can make an argument saying it's up to the present tense. But it starts in a past tense and comes to a present tense. Okay, right here, neither has come to a monstrous woman. Okay. It's still a chunk of time. It's a piece of time period. It's like taking a piece of the pie. It's not talking about the whole pie. It's talking about a piece of it. Okay. Hath come is not the same as is come. Remember the verse that says, who was, and is, present tense, and is to come, future tense. You can't use hath come for present tense or future tense. Present tense by itself. It has to start in the past to a present, and it's only a chunk of time. Okay. So, I wanted to do this study and get it out to you, just a quick one. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to get any pleasure, and it's not about the flesh when I'm calling David Daniel out on this. It's called, this is absolute truth, and what really got to me is, 
it's like he's compromising left and right because his response was, well, you can believe what you, whatever you want to believe. God bless. And I'm like, I can be the standard? I thought God's word is the standard. Like I said, it just seems like he's becoming politics, a people pleaser. Like I said, he doesn't have the backbone to say people that are lost that seem to be important to the world, like important people that are lost and hellbound or already in hell burning, like Billy Graham and, uh, um, gosh, my brain froze, white, um, the white guy. <laughs> um, gosh, I guess my brain just froze on his first name. But he's called him a brother and he attacks kings or The guy's lost and on his way to hell. He's on his way to hell. Okay? And he, can, he calls him brother. We show him in scripture that you're not to make graven images of the Godhead. And who's the image of the Godhead? Jesus Christ. He's the only one you can see. You can't see the soul, you can't see the spirit. And he's still drawing all three. But like I said, on that topic, go watch um, Brother JT. I'm going to link it. He does really good going scripture for scripture, showing, and that's why I can't either. I backed J, Brother JT up on this. Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries already came out with the video. I talked about it. Like I said, I'll link the video for Graven Images about addressing David Daniels, and he still, it's all about pleasing the world. You know, uh, compromising, basically, compromising to win the world, you know. And it's like, you're not supposed to compromise, brothers and sisters in Christ. I recently have had experience where I went through terror, I went through sorrow, I went through hard, a hard time because I compromised. And I'm doing my best, brothers and sisters, to stand firm and say no more compromising. No more. Okay. So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus.